Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, July 1st, first of the month. And theme of the day right on the top of the page, first of the month flows strong, strong to quite strong. So yeah, I mean, that's typically the case on uh, first of the month, you know, the first trading day of the month that uh, there is some new money to be, uh, you know, put into effect. Um, that was something that uh, we talked about in the pre-market session, also talked about that in the member Q&A se session. Just, you know, it's it was one of those things where we kind of set the day up pre-market and we said that, um, you know, typically, not always, it's not always 100% of the time, but typically there is some new money that is put to work. Use this to your advantage, right? And think about this in terms of the week. You know, we, we do have a shortened week. Obviously, this week, Friday is off, the market is closed, and then tomorrow will mostly be kind of quiet. Uh, I don't know if people really will be doing that much traveling because of everything that's going on with the uh, with the coronavirus. But I still think people will be basically, you know, uh, trading a little bit less as, as it goes into tomorrow. So so today you kind of have to take the gift. Right. And basically, you know, it's always a question to me of, you know, where the alpha is in the market or where the risk and reward is in the market. It's probably something that I talk about in, in just about every video. And to me, it's, hey, first of the month of the flow, first day of the month flows are a great thing. Take advantage of it. Um, you know, buy, sell, you know, do some day trading into it and then and then make sure that you're taking some profits off it at the end of the day, right? And not get too greedy because, um, you know, the first of the month flows are just that where usually you don't see them on the second of the month. Um, again, I, it doesn't mean that you're not going to see buying tomorrow or anything like that, but it's just kind of something that you know in the back of your mind and you take advantage of it and you go from there. One of the things that I saw today was, was a pretty uh, stark difference between um, you know, breath again, it's basically been what we've seen for the better part of now three months. Um, it's the haves versus the have nots. And interesting as we kind of came into the day today, you know, we heard about the, uh, the possible like vaccine news from Pfizer. And I was thinking, you know, I had to change my watch list because we just heard around that, heard about that at nine o'clock in the morning. And every day I try to prepare a little bit of a watch list. And I came up with names like, you know, Netflix, uh, TWOU, Square, which, you know, a couple of these names had really, really nice days today. Um, and you could see, you know, Google, I had a couple of the, um, of the fang names in here and you know once that news came out at nine o'clock i'm like huh maybe i have to look at some of the travel names because that might ignite a rally in some of the in some of the more you know travel names some of the names not so sensitive uh to um to technology and basically staying at home but that's not what we um that's not what we got at the, as the as the day developed some of those travel names they rallied pre-market like the airlines were all rallying pre-market um, and then they basically turned around once we started to see that the covid numbers are still very high and now a lot of the governors are basically coming out and um, basically backpedaling some of the things that they've announced um, you know the governor of california has basically announced that they're taking back the you know we heard we heard about bars from florida earlier in the week and today was they're they're not going to allow um uh, eating eating inside restaurants right they'll still have takeout and so forth but again that's basically backpedaling and we saw when we heard similar things from uh cuomo today too if you listen to his press conference today for new york he also mentioned that they're concerned you know and and uh these cases are really going up a lot there was also some comments from the who today so what you know what kind of took off for the day uh well this all the stay-at-home stocks Right. So again, I refer to them as the haves versus the have nots in this environment. But, you know, if you go through, I guess the utilities actually did pretty well today, too. I didn't I didn't see that. We'll look at a couple of charts. There was one name that was upgraded by Goldman this morning, NEE. But really, the FANG stocks were up 2.3 percent. So here's the performance of the S&P kind of just looks like an, you know, an average day up 40 basis points. But if you kind of drill into some of these names. Right. And again, if you look at the Qs, which were up again, different you know, up, uh, you know, 1.2% for the day. Um, and then the small caps got beaten up again. So 
the banks, I mean, look at the bank, you know, the banks got absolutely shelled uh, down, you know, close to 4%. Uh, the regional banking ETF was down 4% for the day. So again, not really healthy breath, um, but it is what it is. I mean, I, again, I, I'm saying haves versus have nots again, but, you know, this is a market where, you know, if you, so first of all, let's, let's look at the FANG stocks. I mean, Amazon seems to be the darling of the group um, right now. Again, another 52 week high and, um, you know, up 4.3%. That's a monster day for Amazon. Really, really, you know, big day. Then also Netflix. Uh, we talked about Netflix in the beginning of the day. Unfortunately, I did not trade this one. Up 6.7% for the day. So I'm surprised that the um, that the queues weren't up more. But again, I, I think it was just very particular stocks. Interesting, this is how this, <laughs> this name looked earlier. If you look at what I was kind of pointing out in the room pre-market and said, hey, and I had an alert on this one. I just don't know why. I, I think I had a, a lot of alerts go off on the open and I missed this one on the open. But look at that thing go. And once it got into value, um, it basically just kept going. Um, nevertheless, you know, my job is to kind of give these uh, these setups to, to members. And I think a lot of people played, a lot of traders played Netflix in the room today. So very, very nice. And then, of course, Facebook just keeps going up regardless of the news. Um, interesting that this happens, you know, again, up another 4.6%. It is basically rallied all the way and, and given uh, has has recovered that whole move. Also, Google has also uh, took back that whole move as well from last week that happened, happened on the, uh, the Russell Rebalance Day. So very impressive there. Of course, Roku, um, you know, saw call activity all throughout the day. Um, we went over this. I posted a couple of charts on Roku. Again, the market values, market, the market uh, web's giving you a great sense of, you know, where that this name was going to, which is basically the top of value for the day, which is a hell of a range, you know, up how many bucks today? $11 today. <clears throat> so then if you look outside of that, um, you know, then it was a lot of the software names. ServiceNow, 52-week high. So again, these are names that benefit when the country is more in lockdown. So uh, very impressive. Shopify as well, um, up 7%. Um, one name that I, I don't know if it exactly fits the, mo the, the mode of this, um, but... Uh, Square, which got a you know really nice price target raise up to 116 today, so another one up ten dollars. How about Wayfair? Another one up uh, twenty one dollars today. So, you know, the also you could kind of tag this as growth, but I, I really think it has to do with what's going on currently. Um, and then if you look at names like you know, the, the airlines, uh, the airlines basically finished down on the day. So again, this was the spike pre-market. If you, you did a good job, if you didn't chase that, that move, I mean, I was looking at names like Expedia pre-market that actually finished fine, finished up two, 2.7% for the day. But, you know, um, you know, I was looking at Honeywell as well. Honeywell finished down on the day. So really, th you know, pretty thin breath. Right. And, and I continue to see a lot of people who I get it. Some technicians, they just look at price. They're not looking at anything that's going on. Maybe they're locked in their basement and they don't know about COVID. But um, I, I'm joking around a little bit. But I do see like a lot of people who put out notes about market breath. And it is what it is. If they're going to shut down the country, there's only going to be so many groups that are going to excel under in this situation. So again, I, that's why I keep calling it the have versus the have not market because certain names, stay at home names, people are going to do extremely well and um, and names that are not that you know when the country is in lockdown, they're going to suffer. And I think that's what we're seeing with the banks, right? Nobody wants to own a bank when this is going on because a lot of companies are, are going to be stressed if they can't reopen or if they re if they reopen for a week after being closed for two months and then have to close again. Really, really not good for for a lot of small businesses and just a lot of businesses, businesses that require foot traffic. So, uh, you know, who knows how this is going to play out, but I understand what these governors are doing. Um, you know, some of these places, right, we talked about the lag last week with, with COVID, right? People were saying, oh, well, the cases are going up, but, you know, the hospitalizations and the deaths aren't. 
Well, you have to give it a couple of weeks for each one of those to see if the data points turn out, right? And sure enough, after a couple of weeks, we're hearing a lot of different cities, you know, Houston in particular, where the ICU is is basically maxed out at this point. So, um, and I think that's what these governors are really, you know, worried about is is maxing out their resources really quickly. Um, so we'll see how this continues to play out. We just kind of have to take it one day at a time. And, and as well, plenty of opportunities, you know, in different things. Um, one group that um, I was kind of surprised at that was very strong, right? We're see Sometimes we do see one or two days of strength in a group and then it kind of vanishes. But the semiconductors, look at Micron is basically given back that whole move, you know, after earnings. Um, Xilinx is another one, right, that came out with good guidance, took out that version point of control, and uh, that's it. I mean, Xilinx was down 5.2%. Really, again, really odd because if you look at the, the FANG stocks, complete opposite in some of the stocks that, I, that I've already gone through. I mean, I got into, I tried playing a little bit of Qualcomm today and uh, I bailed on it because, hey, but just if it's not there, it's not there. Um, even though this looked like a pretty good chart setup, um, it's still an inside day. The other one that I'm hanging on to is the one that's doing worse. It's sold off right at the end of the day too, which is Texas Instruments. So if you're in this trade with me, <clears throat> I'm still in this one. Uh, I'm going to just, you know, it was my first entry. Also an inside day here, but I just didn't like the look of it at the end of the day. Really, really weak. For now, I'm still in it and we'll monitor it. Um, it is an August option position. You know, if it shows a little bit of, of life tomorrow, I may add to it. But interesting to see that these um, that these semiconductors didn't have any follow through and and basically underperformed pretty deep down 1.1 percent. Now again, a lot of groups underperformed today, um, as you can see. The breath is not good on my screen. Metals and mining. Look at the home builders down 2.4 percent uh, for the day. So no strength there as well. And um, yeah, let's look at the let's look at the utilities because they kind of escaped me a bit. Could be a little bit with this. Well, the move in interest rates. What did, where did TLT finish for the day? Uh, TL, TLT basically finished flat for the day, so it did recover off the lows. But um, utilities did make a turn there. Um, NEE did pretty well. I still I still can't get over this square um, today, and you know. It's one of those things, too, where you, some of these names you just have to kind of sit in, right? Um, I've talked about before how, how I have two port I manage two portfolios. I manage one that's my trading account where I basically have I day trade in it. And then, of course, you know, what I do more is swing trading. But I've got like all different types of duration swing trades in that account. And sometimes, you know, it, rather than just sitting in names, the trading account doesn't do as well as just sitting in the names, and that's why I do have another account, which is the um, which is the tactical portfolio. And you could see the, the last trades that I added in this was back was back in the the middle of the month. Um, I took out a few names there. I deleted and I added Square, I added Twilio, I added Vertex, and I added Zillow. And um, clearly, that that uh, Square was a good move. And I've been long shop now for a while, um, even though it's a, a smaller weight because I did take some profits in that one. But um, I've been long Amazon for a while, so I've got some really nice winners uh, within this group. I think I'm up uh, Shopify. I am now up 100% in Shopify. Amazon, I'm up 55% in this one. And uh, yeah, PayPal, I'm up 58%. So again, this is a nice way for me to just kind of sit in some trades. Tesla, I'm up 45% in, and I, this was just put on basically a couple months ago for Tesla. I think we, we added that in the portfolio about two months ago. So impressive, impressive. Um, but again, that's for me the, the, the best way to play it. Um, I will send out a video in terms of um, my P&L for the for the month for June. You know, here it is. Uh, I'll again, I'll give a whole video on um, how I did for the month of June. But you can see I'm I'm pretty happy with the way um, overall the performance is for the year. I, could I have done better in June? Absolutely. Uh, a couple things, which again I'll go into detail about that. But you know, we're on to the new month, right? So you got to take one month at a time. And, uh, you know, forget about what you did so far this year. Good month, bad month in terms of June doesn't matter. Your job right now is to, you know, 
uh, is to is to crush July um, and do well for that. So um, I think that's important to kind of realize that. Um, remember, it's the Bill Belichick approach. He takes one game at a time, um, and then he'll get to the playoffs, and you know. A lot of times wins the Super Bowl. Same thing with trading. You take one month at a time. You win one month at a time. That's the whole goal. All right. And then uh, you'll string together a pretty good year if that takes place. Um, again, just a few other things. Uh, here's my trades. You know, again, just a lot of day. There was a lot of day trading opportunities. Some things I substituted in and out of. You know, I just kind of caught that the software and fang names were so strong. Um, Datadog was a, is a name that I've wanted to kind of play. You know, I played the turn in this today, but also the cyber names were strong again. Again, cyber, you're going to need more cyber security if you're if everybody's working for home for longer. I, I you know, it's really going to be really interesting with this work at home. I keep talking to people, some of my co colleagues, some in fi in the financial world, some outside of the financial world. And some, some of these individuals are not going back to work for a long time, possibly even till next year. So, you know, cybersecurity should continue to be, you know, pretty strong. So crowd up nicely, up, uh, you know, over almost 3% as well. Um, this is another name I haven't watched for a while, but... Um, Let's see how the chart, sometimes these thinkorswim charts just take a long time if you haven't brought up a symbol. But this one's kind of interesting. Remember CyberArk software? Um, trying, to, trying to come back into play a little bit. Splunk has been a really strong name too, up another one. So, you know, an, another big move in that one. But again, very, very impressive price action for some of these groups. The last thing I will say about this group is that, again, just be mindful. And that's why sometimes, you know, if you're just doing some day trades, you know, either leaving a portion of the day trade on is fine. Um, but keep in mind, if they do make any headway versus a vaccine, this group, these groups are going to be, you know, I think my prediction, as I don't like to make predictions a lot, but I would think if they do make some headway towards a vaccine and this, the clinical, you know, whatever clinical trial some of these things are in, if it goes well, you could see some profit taking in this whole group. Um, growth, you could classify it as growth, but you know, this, I would say the stay at home stocks, software, FANG. Um, and then of course, we'll see a rotation into some of the value areas. So you just kind of have to keep that in the back of your mind. We talked about that pre-market too, is if they do do that, then, you know, really start to take a look at the travel stocks and, and some of the banks as, as well. Um, last setup that we kind of caught when, was one name that I've been watching. Uh, again, this whole software group, I'll show you what the software group did today. But if we look at the movers, um, <laughs> you could see um, EV. Oh, EVGB. That was a, that was another name that um, was a really nice looking setup. I put this in here in the Market Web's channel this morning. Um, it was another name that I thought I said, "Hey, this looks pretty good." Uh, it's been tracking the 50-day moving average, and usually when this happens, eventually you get a pretty big bounce. So again, these are all things that we kind of. Uh, that we try to go over pre-market, but there it is, right? There's there's a nice move, and target up here is going to be right around 155, one you know 155 VPOC, but pretty stellar. And just the last setup that I wanted to show, uh, but let's just look at the software name, the other software names too. But you could see like TTD was another one. <laughs> So when you have something like this, Docu is up again, Coupa Software. Again, some of these names, right, they are, getting very, they are getting very stretched. Um, but if you're looking for one that could have a little bit more upside to it, I did put on a call spread in, uh, in Team. It does look like it's, you know, after a couple months of consolidation, it could be ready to kind of take that, um, take that leg higher. So I'm positioned for that. All right, guys, that, uh, have a great night, everybody. A great day of trading. Uh, so very excited for the month ahead. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow in the trading room.